Get all the Master Force outdoor power equipment you need to maintain your yard at Menards. Own the outdoors with Master Force 80 volt power equipment, delivering all the power of gas without the maintenance. The entire 80 volt line is powered by brushless motors for ultimate performance and productivity. From lawnmowers to leaf blowers, string trimmers, and more. Find everything you need to create the lawn of your dreams with Master Force power equipment at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by Omaha Steaks. Josh All with you, and I've got Kenny McAttack is back on the show again today. Kenny, what's going on, man? Not too much, just surviving the rain up here, but I am pumped to do another uh, draft simulation. Let's see who we can get going, and uh, let's uh, make this team better. That's right. So like Kenny said, we are going to be doing something a little different today. So we did a mock draft. Actually, we did two mock drafts two weeks ago. Go back and check out that episode. See what kind of rosters or, uh, sorry, draft classes we put together. But today we're going to do something a little different. We're actually going to go head-to-head mock draft battle. So Kenny is going to be on the right side of the screen. I'm going to be on the left. And we're just going to go pick for pick and make our selections and at the end of the day we will have you guys tell us in the comments and voting on social media who came out with the better mock draft it's going to be a ton of fun kenny's got some technical difficulties due to that rain he mentioned so if he's if his audio is a little weird or video is a little clunky bear with us because that's he's, he's got a little weather going on up there yeah it's not just me <laughs> no it's not so Actually, we had some pretty nasty storms just the other night, so it happens. It definitely happens. Um, Just want to mention real quick before we get started, if you guys are watching on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you're listening on audio, especially Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star written review, and those really help out the show. Get us in front of more Browns fans like you guys, and reminder, Friday night, draft night, night two, going over rounds two and three. Kenny Mack will be in studio. We're going to be live on YouTube covering everything that's happening in rounds two and three. We're going to be with you guys breaking down what happened the night before on the first round, talking about where all the players went, the trades that went down, all the crazy stuff that nobody saw coming. It happens every year, and we can't wait to discuss it all with you guys. Jump in the chat because we're going to be doing all of that, and we're going to be taking you guys into pick 54 if the Browns keep it, and 85 that night. And it's just going to be a great time, Kenny. Can't wait to have you in studio. Yeah, Josh. I mean, like, I, I'm super pumped to get down to see you guys on Friday. I'm actually going to be at the draft on Thursday. Uh, where I grew up, it's about 39 minutes to the border. Or that's where my sister lives at now anyways. And uh, so I'll be there. I can't wait to hang out with some other Browns fans just to see how the draft night unfolds. We got really no skin in the game. So there's it's just going to be a party for us and us getting together, seeing what we need the next day and see how the board falls so if any of these guys are watching if you're there i'll be there come and say hi maybe we'll sit, take some pictures or do an intro for the dogs podcast it'd be super awesome all right man that's awesome yeah i can't wait to get your firsthand experience on friday from what you saw and, and everything that happened thursday night at the you know the first round and everything like that and what you said is is key because we've said this multiple times on the show and we'll reiterate it here the browns don't need anything in the draft which is awesome we are in a position where we we don't need anybody we draft to start or play meaningful snaps outside of injury fill in this season whatsoever and that is a great position to be in and i we didn't do this on the show yet but 
it's not a huge signing, but the Browns did just sign an offensive uh, tackle. He's played some guard, Jermaine yeah. uh, Afidi. He played. He was a first yep. round pick, I think, in 2016 for the Seahawks. Played there four years, and then yep. went to I forget. The, it was another. He went to another team, then the Falcons, and you know I don't think last year he, he must. I think he was on the Bills practice squad, but yeah. You know, we that's just right. continue to bolster some, some the depth. Lions uniform too, so yes, maybe that's what it was. All over, yeah. So you know, we bolster the depth, and the thing is, we've been signing depth pieces at all the positions that we go in. We're going into the draft thinking, well, these are the areas we need to focus on, and we still do. But the thing is, the Browns have put themselves again in even a stronger position to just take best player available based on their board and based on how they value positions now. I say best player available based on their board because we might at home be sitting there saying, oh, there's a a running back on the board at 54 that we love. But on their board, based on how they value positions, maybe there's an offensive guard, you know, maybe five or six spots down on somebody else's board that the Browns were like, hey, this guy was, and according to our board, he should have already been gone. So, you know, that, that it just all depends on how they've got it drawn up. Yeah, so you and I have been talking about what the Browns actually need, and uh, you have to really go to the back end of the roster, fill it out, but let's get some guys on a meaningful contract to get and supplant the starters that we already have. And we've talked about it before. I'm going to kind of base my stuff off of who's going to be injured and and what's going to be a gaping hole if that injury occurs. Okay. And we've talked about it. Like I think tight end is going to be a gaping hole. If things don't work out with Bush, you've said this a couple times in the last week. You look at that linebacker position, there could be a gaping hole, right? Even at the guard position. Now, we just picked one up today, so I'm feeling a little bit better about a guy that has meaningful uh, snaps. And uh, so maybe I won't look at guard as high, but we got got two high-priced guys. And they're going to retire or they're going to be gone at some point or they're not, we might not move them to the next level or the next contract. Yeah, that's a good point. And again, we'll see how our mock drafts shake out. But, you know, taking a guard who potentially could start this year, depending on how things go through camp and how the Browns feel, that gives them flexibility with Wyatt Teller and his contract. And, you know, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean a trade would happen in the spring or the summer, but, you know, the, the, who knows what happens toward the trade deadline in the season. So it's just all kinds of That's things. Right. But we are going to do our head-to-head mock draft. I have no idea how long this is going to take, so we will see. But what we're actually going to do, we're going to have both drafts side-by-side side on the screen. And, Kenny, I think we'll go over a little, a couple ground rules here. So sure. I'm going to go ahead and let you pick first. Okay, so you'll get the first pick. So we'll get to 54, you'll pick, and then I'll go to 54, and I'll make my pick. And I think a rule that I want to lay down is we cannot have duplicate players in our drafts. Yeah, I've I've already thought about that. Okay. And obviously the one major rule that we know is um, there's not going to be any trades. Yeah, right. So we're not going to do any of it because we're going to use Pro Football Network Simulator. You know, mock trades always pop up when you're on the clock. We're just going to disregard those. We're just going to make the Browns picks. And, you know, Kenny going first, if he takes a guy that whenever I get to 54 is on the board and I want to take him, I can't take him. So we'll have to, I'll have to pivot. And I think it'll make it a little more interesting. So do you have anything else you want to add? No, I mean, uh, if you guys see us take a guy that's super low, it means we would have probably traded in some scenario, but we do want to get this podcast done at some point as well. (laughs) So uh, just bear that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, honestly, if you guys are watching this on YouTube or, you know, just listening at home, if you want to play along, pull up Pro Football Network's Mock Draft Simulator on your phone, go through your own mock drafts, take screenshots and post them on our social media on Twitter and Facebook. And I guess that's probably pretty much it, but tag us on social media with your mock drafts and if we get you know the opportunity we'll pull some of those up during the draft show next friday and comment on what you guys came up with in your mock drafts as well so kenny let's get this head-to-head started yeah let's do this okay so like i mentioned we got our two drafts up on the screen kenny's on the right i'm on the left and kenny we'll go ahead we, we got this set up for seven rounds we're going to go fast we are the cleveland browns and we're going to enter your draft and let's get you to 54 so it takes let's a couple- go brownies come on that's right let's get so somebody good here we go rolling through thursday night browns don't need to worry about nothing we will be with you guys on friday instead 
And we'll be going through these 40s and everything. And right up to pick 54, Kenny is on the board. What do you what do you see in here with the guys on your list? All right. So I am looking at I love Trey I love Trey Benson. And uh let's see who else we got here. Um who do we have for offensive line? I mean, can you uh, just check who we got for offensive line? I'm looking for Patrick Paul. Patrick Paul is Looks like he is not on the board. Let me go into offense here. I'll bring up your tackles. So you got Roger Rosengarten, uh, Karina Menjidi, and Blake Fisher are kind of your top three tackles still on the board. And then guard, Cooper Beebe still on the board. Christian Mahogany from Boston College. And uh, Dominic Booney from Kansas. Okay, I, I'm going to go for... Um, uh, I really want to do something about the guard position. Um, I think Cooper Beebe is going to be... Uh, a great uh, addition to the Cleveland Browns just with him. Like he's, he's a 9.3 on his RAS yeah. and he's got over 30 games under his belt. Now, the other thing that I think that the Browns are looking for or based on what Barry's been saying is that he, he wants a pretty good uh, medical report. Now, from what I've read on him, I don't think that he's missed any games. And if you take a look at the guy, he's six, three, um, he's 322 pounds, so that's a 72 percentile. Anything over 17 or uh, 70 percent is what I'm kind of looking for. Shuttle run was awesome. The 10 yard was 79, so he's just barely over 80, uh, almost 80 there. His 40 time is 93 percentile. So I'm really looking forward to having that guy on the team. I think he can take a place of one of the guys in the future. And one of the things that if you listen to a lot of pundits, and I think it's right, is that there's a lot of money on that offensive line while you're paying the quarterback. Something's got to give. I agree with you 100%. He's actually a name that I was hoping would be on the board when I got to pick. So now I will not be able to take Cooper BB because you're taking Cooper BB, but out of guard, offensive guard out of Kansas State, I, I think that he is a plug-and-play day one starting caliber offensive guard I think once they get him in and through camp and everything this is the guy that I was alluding to earlier where if you had the opportunity to take a Cooper BB at uh, 54 you have flexibility now with a guy like Wyatt Teller not that we're trying to push Wyatt Teller out the door not that if I was the GM I would just automatically trade him but I'm just saying it gives you that flexibility if this guy shows that hey I think he could handle this starting spot kind of like Dewan Jones at right tackle last year you know White Teller is one of those contracts that it, there's cap space to be gained by moving him. And I think if Wyatt Teller gets in the right situation, like a Carolina this year, if he was a free agent, they would throw a lot of money at him. Oh yeah, and for it's sure, money that he deserves. And uh, I don't want to, I don't want to forsake it to him to make that money. But the Browns, with where we're at, it's not going to happen. No, definitely not. And it sucks because I love Wyatt Teller. I mean, we get Christmas cards from him 100%. and his wife, so it's it's pretty cool. But, you know, it, that's all good. Um, so I'll go ahead and select Cooper BB here for you, and your draft yep. is going to go ahead and roll. I'm going to bounce over here, and I'll get my draft started. So let's see who ends up on the board at 54 for me. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Browns fans, nothing says summer is on its way like the taste of a juicy, tender burger that is grilled to perfection. And nobody does burger perfection like Omaha Steaks. And right now, when you guys go to omahasteaks.com slash dogs, you can order the limited time burger perfection flight. This is one of my favorite deals from last year that they did, and I'm so glad they're doing it again. You guys get 24 mouthwatering steak burgers, not just regular burgers, Freaking steak burgers, the pure ground filet mignon burgers, the New York strip burgers, the ribeye burgers, the brisket burgers, the sirloin burgers, and the all new porterhouse burgers. And you get all of that for just $89.99 when you use our code DAWGS DOGS when you check out. Each six ounce burger is filled with flavor from the mild and tender filet mignon to the rich and buttery ribeye. The quality and deliciousness of these burgers can only come from Omaha Steaks and they are guaranteed to satisfy. And guys, at $3.75 a patty, you really can't beat that with the price of food right now. And the price of meat in the grocery stores is absolutely ridiculous. You cannot beat this deal. 
90 bucks, 89.99 for 24 of these phenomenal, delicious, awesome steak burgers. And you get all of that when you use code DOGS at checkout. Go to omahasteaks.com, order the Burger Perfection Flight today, and do not forget to use that promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out to get everything. The 24 delicious burgers. Hurry, because these supplies are limited. Take advantage of this opportunity now before supplies run out. OmahaSteaks.com slash dogs, promo code dogs. Before we move on, Ohio, Bet365 is offering new users $150 in bonus bets this month. To receive your bonus bets, all you have to do is sign up for Bet365 using our link, make a first deposit of $10, and place a $5 wager on any game. Once that first $5 bet settles, you will receive $150 in bonus bets, even if you lose the bet. To be eligible for this sign-up bonus, you must sign up through our link down in the description. So if you haven't yet signed up for Bet365, click our link in the description and place that first bet. This offer is only available for new customers who are 21 and older and physically present in Ohio. Please gamble responsibly. If you or a loved one has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check the episode description for the full terms to see if you can qualify. All right, so we are rolling into... 54 for me, and it does not matter. Cooper BB, not on the board, but a guy that I never have seen on the board whenever I pick a 54 is sitting on the board. That is unreal. Tyler Guyton, the offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. Talked to Barry Shuck about him from the Senior Bowl. Barry came away just blown away by Tyler Guyton. This guy is humongous. He's 6'7", 322, and 973 Raz. I mean, I... I know a lot of people might be thinking, why would you be trying to go offensive tackle here? You've got Jones and Wills and Conklin, and that is true. But after this season, you might just have to wand. We don't know what's going to happen with Jed. We don't know if he's going to take the next step, if he's going to be worth extending any further. We don't know what's going on with Conklin. He can he's, his Health is a big issue with him. But Tyler Guyton sitting on the board here, I'm I'm flabbergasted that he's available, but... I'm going to pick him because that's that's huge value. I don't see why the Browns wouldn't do that. If he wasn't on the board, I'd be looking at Zach Frazier from West Virginia, the offensive lineman. I'd be looking at Leonard Taylor, uh, defensive tackle from Miami, and I would be looking at, well, yeah. Chris Braswell, the edge rusher from Alabama, is on the board too. That's tempting, and so is Michael Hall, defensive tackle from Ohio State. But I'm going to take Tyler Guyton and, and get – so we're both going O-line – at 54. That's yeah, pretty cool. You, you got some gems there, my man. Those are great. And uh, getting an offensive tackle, I think, is a really, really good idea. Uh, Jed Wills, I think he's all right, but I just question his passion for football. And I'm not saying he doesn't love it, but I don't think he would. It, it's not that he doesn't love it. It's just that I don't think he's as diehard into it as uh, one should be for football. It just kind of shows in his overall demeanor. Yep, I'm with you 100% on that. So, all right, you are on the board now with pick 85, and what are you going to do here? (laughs) All right, let me take a look here. So, I have, what I'm going to do, can you just check out the running back situation for me? Sure. Uh, Running back looks like we're Blake Corum sitting at the top, Braylon Allen, Bucky Irving, and Audric Estime are kind of your top four guys there. This is what I, so I, I kind of fell in this exact same scenario just before we uh, started this. And what, I, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go for Allen from Wisconsin. Okay. Now, number one, I think I would trade, I would have traded back about a couple spots to try and get him. But I don't know if the Dallas Cowboys are going to take him because I believe they're just behind us. Are they not? Uh, or maybe yeah. not in this scenario. Yeah, they're in 87. Yeah, okay, so they're at 87, so I'm trading in front of them still, but they could trade ahead of us, I'm not sure. The reason why I'm going for this kid is I don't want to see him in the AFC North except on our team. And I believe in uh, the last episode he did or the previous one is that guy's going to end up in the AFC North and he's going to end up as a battering ram, either for the Steelers or behind King, uh, um, Derrick Henry. The uh, Derrick Henry, thanks. And... Um, I almost said Eddie George there for some reason. And uh, <laughs> I, I maybe he kind of reminds me of Eddie George. That's why I had that on my brain. I don't know, but he's a big kid. He's 240 pounds. Uh, I'm just going to bring it up right now. But he is number 84 on the freak list. 
And uh, he has got 25 starts under his belt. I think every year he's went for about 1,000 and about 10-plus uh, touchdowns. And that's what I want to see him do for the Browns. But the reason why I really want this guy is because we lost Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt is not coming back. And that's about 11 touchdowns, which was about nine rushing to receiving, if I'm correct, that uh, we're leaving on the board or leaving uh, – like leaving the actual Browns. That being said, uh, this kid here seems to be able to get touchdowns throughout the year. With his size, I just want to ram him right behind our offensive line, the guys that are pulling all the money. And now that we have BB, he can pull and run right behind him, and we can get those touchdowns and those first downs that we need uh, to keep the ball moving to help our quarterback out. Because one of the biggest things is, where I'm going offense is to help Deshaun in any way get to the quarterback that he can be from a couple years ago. I like it, man. Okay, so we will go Braylon Allen, and again, he's just 20 years old. He's a very, very young running back, so that is another strong plus in his favor, and I think that he could definitely perform pretty well in the AFC North. So I like the pick. Now, I'm over here at my draft at 85. I'm on the board, and... I'm glad that I was able to get Tyler Guyton, but I really like Roger Rosengarten. He's a tackle from Washington. And Karan Amegedi is the tackle from Yale. The Browns mm-hmm. have met with him. These two guys are on the board. So here's where I'm thinking, oh, maybe I didn't need to go with that tackle, but the value was too good for me not to do it there. So I'm sitting here in the second round, and, man, I'll tell you what, there are some guys on the board that I like. I'm looking at... Um, Mason Smith, defensive tackle from LSU. And then down a little bit, Tavondre Sweat, the defensive tackle from Texas. I know he's got the DUI drinking issues that are just dropping him down the board. I don't know after Perry on Winfrey if I'm really willing to kind of take that kind of swing on a guy again. So I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to take Mason Smith, defensive tackle from LSU. I just think that's a pretty good value on the board there. I think it helps bolster the depth of defensive tackle because I know we've got a lot of guys right now, and I've talked about how the defensive line is pretty full right now, but I do think there's probably a spot for one guy, and I think it gives you the opportunity to maybe move somebody here in the um, in the spring and the summer if need be. So... I'll go ahead and do that. Mason Smith from LSU. Yeah, I think it's reasonable to think if you're on a one-year contract, you're not necessarily going to make the team. If anything, it just drives competition, which will be amazing. This guy has got a wingspan that's like 98 percentile and his height is in 91. So he's got a lot of things that you can't teach or add to a player. So with Jim Schwartz, I think he's a great fit, and I think that's a great pick. Well, thanks, Kenny. I appreciate that. (laughs) All right, man, so you're up. Now, one thing I'm doing these mock drafts, the weight between 85 and 156 is long. It There are a lot of guys that get drafted in that range. So you're, like you said with the Braylon Allen pick, there's an opportunity to trade back, trade back a little bit into that range, 156 maybe trade up a little bit in that range if there's a guy they like who's fallen down the board a little bit. So that is definitely a big gap there. But here you go. You're at 156. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Coriant. Coriant provides wealth management services centered around you. They focus on exceeding your expectations and simplifying your life. Coriant has been helping high achievers just like you enjoy their lives more fully, preserve their wealth, and provide for the people, causes, and communities they care about. As one of the largest integrated fee-only registered investment advisors in the U.S., Coriant has deeply experienced teams in 23 strategic locations. Coriant has extensive knowledge spanning the full spectrum of planning, investing, lending, and money management disciplines. Leverage Coriant's exclusive network of experts to craft custom solutions designed to help you reach your financial goals, no matter how complex they may be. Real wealth requires real solutions. For more information, connect with a wealth advisor today at Coriant.com. That's C-O-R-I-E-N-T.com. Coriant.com. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early 
so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Craig is usually a fan of water cooler talk, but it's draft season, and that's all anyone wants to talk about. The Athletic has loads of articles about this year's draft, but Greg doesn't have The Athletic, so now he's filling up his water bottle in the bathroom sink. Which, to remind you, is the sink people use after they use the bathroom. Get The Athletic and get the info you need to speak draft fluently. And... All right, so I, I still, at the beginning of the show, said that there's a gaping hole at tight end if something happens with Njoku. So if you can pull up who's available at tight end. Absolutely this so. This is another scenario where I might trade back. Yeah. go. Here's your tight end situation. Tanner McLaughlin from Arizona. Tip Riemann from Illinois. Dallin Hoker, Colorado State. Brevin Span Ford, Minnesota. A.J. Barner, Michigan. But now so you're... ultimately... Go ahead. Ultimately, what I do here is I would go... I, I, we, I don't know if you remember, or maybe what was it you on the end of the um, Dogs podcast, but I got in a debate with a guy about picking tight end in the for the second round. And he was big into uh, Tip Reitman there. Hmm. And I checked him out. I'm pretty impressed with what he offers uh, for where we're picking him. Um, I believe he's like 270 pounds. Yep. Yeah, thanks for pulling that up. He's 6'4". Uh, I, from what I read, his measurables are unreal 992 raz yeah his raz is huge and i think at the 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 value just for that alone and development i would love to have that the only thing is is i got a little soft spot in my heart uh for the guy in arizona because he's canadian he's from alberta he's from lethbridge uh (laughs) he is supposed to be an amazing blocker um and that's something that i want to see behind najoku but based on the size of Reitman, I'm thinking that he can do that and he should be fine. And um, I'm going to see if I have him pulled up here. Oh, I actually do have him pulled up. Just give me one second. Yeah. I'm going to see if it gives me anything on his uh, on his uh, ability to block. Uh, 41 receptions, 420 yards, five touchdowns. I mean, at the end of the day, this guy can um, – we're going to throw him some 50-50 balls just based on his height. But um, he's a guy that seems like he probably could have played basketball. I mean, his role looks – to oh, his role is basically inline blocking tight end. And if that guy basically knows where the first down marker is, I'll be happy and I'll take him. Okay, so you want Tip Ryman or Riemann from Illinois? Yeah. All right, so Kenny's getting a tight end. So there you go. Kenny, we'll just kind of take a peek here. So far, you've gone Cooper Beebe, Braylon Allen, and Tip Ryman. And I am over here on pick 156. And I've got some decisions to make because at the top of my board is kind of a good value that I was hoping to see there. Marshawn Lloyd, the running back from USC, is on the board. And some, you know, he's in the top three, maybe top five at the worst, depending on whose rankings you're looking at running backs in this class. Jonah Ellis, the edge rusher out of Utah, is on the board. I've already taken a defensive lineman. Ah, and I know how much Andrew Perry likes his defensive lineman. Oh, boy. I got Eric All if I wanted to go tight end. Mm. Jaheim Bell tight end is also on the board. I like Jaheim Bell. I think you can run him in different situations. He can be an H-back. He can be a fullback. He can be a tight end. He even played running back. I think you guys covered that in one of your mock dra- or mock shows in the last little bit. Um, he could be a great, I don't want to say gadget player, but he might keep the defense on the back of their heels a little bit. And based on what the offense is looking for, that's somebody that I consider just didn't find him on my end. Yeah, no, and I mean, he'd be a value based on the rankings of this draft. But I think I'm going to get a little bit reckless here. I'm actually going to do our boy Gage Tucker a favor. I talked about this on a previous episode. 
I'm taking wide receiver Jalen Coker from Holy Cross because we oh, talked nice. about him the other night. Gage has gotten us very much familiar with Jalen Coker. Now, the big thing with him, like I mentioned before, smaller school, lesser competition, not really sure if he can handle the competition of the pros, pro-level cornerbacks and defenders in the NFL. But the dude dominated. He's got like, a, I think it was a 9.46 Raz. He's 6'1", 210. Big body receivers, got great hands, does not drop the ball, and he scores touchdowns, which is huge. He's got 30 touchdowns in his college career. I, I just think for this spot at 156 to get a guy like that who's got potential wide, I would say he has wide receiver two upside, I think. Obviously, if you hit a home run, I mean, that'd be awesome. But at, I think he could be a serviceable wide receiver three, which on our offense, we're still looking for a guy to be reliable kind of in that that role. So I'm going to go ahead and take Jalen Coker, wide receiver from Holy Cross. Nice, great pick. Again, there's something that you're helping out Deshaun with. Uh, he has the speed to take the top off the D, and that's generally what you want uh, out of a receiver based on what's on this team right now. That's right. All right, man. 206, you are on the board. So 206, we got a guard already, and uh, I haven't drafted any linebackers yet. We definitely need something for special teams. We need somebody that's a thumper. Uh, let's see who we got for linebacker here. Okay, so linebacker, we'll pull that up. You got your Ed from Washington, Edufon uh, Ulafoshio, uh, Omar Spates is on the board, Jackson Mitchell. Yeah, so go ahead yeah, and take I'm a gander going, here. I'm going for the kid from Washington. Okay. We've already discussed him. Not too much to say. Sideline to sideline guy. Uh, let's get him uh, behind that uh, defensive line that we have and make some tackles, man, and earn your keep on special teams. Okay, 206. Kenny has taken Ed from Washington, a guy we took in previous mock draft uh, two weeks ago when we did ours. So 206 over on my board. I'm sitting here, and I've got – Tip Ryman has fallen to me. I can't take him because you did. I could take Tanner McLaughlin if I wanted to take a tight end. There's your uh, your Canadian guy, right? Let's see yep. who else is on the board here. I just want to take a peek. And okay, that kind of stinks. So I was going to take um, D. Camarian Richardson out of uh, Mississippi State if he was still on the board, but it, oh, he went about eight picks or so, maybe whatever, before mine. So, okay, no big deal. I wanted to try to get a cornerback because we know that Andrew Barry really likes his corners. And, oh, man, some of these guys, I'm just not as familiar with the cornerback position as I should be, especially at this point in the draft. So I think I'm going to, maybe I'll take a gander at my running back boards. Mm, nothing really crazy jumping out of me there. I'll go ahead and I'll do the Tanner McLaughlin pick because I know you liked him as well. I think I'll go ahead and grab him yeah. here. Get that tight He's end. another guy that's going to be like an inline blocker. Uh, yeah. His blocking's very, very good to come into the league, so it's something you don't have to teach him. I mean, there's always things that they got to work on, but... Um, I think he's another guy that you could do a 50-50 ball to. If you got anything that's like Tunyon or something along that lines where the guy just knows the first down and gets it, I think that's the way to go for tight end. All right. Well, that's what we got going on here. So you are on the board now with round or uh, pick 227. This episode is brought to you by Danger Coffee. Browns fans, we talk about how Danger Coffee is made free from mold toxins that are in 45% of the world's coffee, but that's not all that Danger Coffee has to offer. Mineral and nutrient deficiencies are a big deal. They make you feel sick, tired, stressed, and they can give you brain fog. These deficiencies negatively affect your immune system, your digestion, sleep, metabolism. Have you ever wondered why you get an initial burst from your coffee? But then you get that little crash not long after. Danger Coffee's patent pending process remineralizes your body with more than 50 trace minerals and electrolytes, leaving you more energized, engaged, powerful. These micronutrients enter the cells to boost performance. They bind to toxins to provide detoxification support. I know that sounds like a lot, but the bottom line, guys, is minerals matter. And most of us really don't get enough of them on a daily basis. Danger Coffee delivers micronutrients, plus it gives you access to the minerals you already have. 
Head to DangerCoffee.com, use our code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for 10% off your order. And that code can be used over and over. So you get 10% off every order you make using code DOGS. It's time to start every day off with a cup of coffee that gets you going and actually keeps you going. DangerCoffee.com, code DOGS. Yeah, so uh, what I want to do is I want to take a look at the guys that have the highest RAS at this point. I want to go for pure athletic um, talent, and I want the coaches that we have uh, to get the most out of that talent because that's what they're there for. Um, there's two guys right at the top of the list, Logan Lee and um, the guy from James Madison there. Uh, I just can't see his name. Uh, Jamry uh, Chroma. Yeah, I believe the, the guy from James Madison has played the, the, the lesser competition but has the bigger RAS score. And based on our needs, I think he can kind of sit on uh, what's his brass score there? Just it was a nine six seven, I believe. Yeah, I'm going for that, and uh, I'm going to get Coach Schwartz to do his magic and see what he can get out of this guy. Generally, he's probably going to stay on inactive for most of the season. Uh, hopefully, he can push Ayaki Ika, and maybe those two will be a formidable uh, twosome in the future, uh, or they're pushing someone else, and they're going to be better than they are in the end. I like it, man. I like it a lot. So I'm sitting over here then at 227, and there's a guy on the board that I like, and I'm going to take him. I know, man, and I'm going against everything I've already said in the past couple weeks about our defensive line being pretty stacked the way it is, but Andrew Barry in the Browns front office highly value the defensive line. You can never have enough edge rushers. I'm going to go ahead and take a swing on Eric Watts, the edge out of UConn. He's 6'5", 274. He's a big dude, an A31 Raz. I know there's a lot of people that are kind of high on him. So at this point in the draft, let's let's like you said, find some athletic, you know, upside, some physical advantages, and see what happens. Coach him up. Yeah. I can agree more. All right, and that gets you on the clock for your last pick of your side of the draft at 243. So at 243, I've generally been drafting a linebacker. Again, I want to fill out that room. Uh, it's pretty depleted from what I see, and you can push the guys that are currently there. Um, if you can pull up the linebacker, yeah. is the kid from uh, uh, UCLA there? Uh, I don't see anybody no. from UCLA. No, so I think my next my next bet is Luke Reimer. I think he was the biggest guy that was left on the board out of these guys here. Uh, six two twenty. Yeah, six foot two twenty three, six four three. Raz. Yeah, I mean, I, I just need a guy for special teams. Um, I think I'm going to go that route. Um, he, he's. Uh, I think I read his profile. Um, there was something about him. It was either tackling uh, or it was sideline side side ability. I was like, this guy's going to be great for special teams, and then hopefully he can work his way like um, on the team like Justin Kodasik or something along that lines and be a leader on both special teams and defense. I like it. Okay, so I'm up with my last pick at 243, and I'm just going to go ahead – I'm going to take a guy that Brian Bosarge mentioned to me to us on the episode last weekend about you know some of the, some later picks that he really likes, thinks could be a good value, and I'm going to take Kamani Vidal, the running back out of Troy. Looks mm-hmm. like he's five seven, so he's smaller, but he's two thirteen, well built, eight 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 Raz, and you know, Brian was pretty high on him, so I think I'm going to go ahead and trust the expert opinion, and I'm just going to grab that running back. Because there's a linebacker that was still on the board here that uh, Nathaniel Watson, I believe it's Mississippi State, that perhaps could be a UDFA, could maybe fill a void that way. So, all right, Kenny, we have wrapped it up. Your board comes out, your your draft class for the 2024 Browns is Cooper Beebe, Braylon Allen, Tip Riemann, Edifuan Ulafoshio, Jamri Chroma and Luke Reamer. You actually took two linebackers in this draft class. Yeah, so you got a yeah, guy who I, could I probably like fill in linebacker situation. Yeah. And uh, I just got some guys that are thumpers and that can run the field. And uh, they're both are a little bit older. 
Um, but for the for the money that the Browns put on that position, I'm all right with him being a little bit older. I mean, here's the thing that I was saying before. Uh, he's got good twitch. Uh, that's that's uh, Reamer. Shows good speed and closing burst when blitzing. Um, he's built like a defensive back, though, so you're kind of like – Doing the same thing that you're doing with JOK, yeah. But so, he, I, I mean, mean, that might spell the end for Fields. Exactly. Tony Fields on the last year of his deal, anyway. So this could just be a slide reamer in there, and Fields is on out after this season. So I mean, a, a pretty seamless transition potentially. Yep. Yep. So over on my side, I kicked things off. Could not believe Tyler Guyton was still on the board at 54. So I took the tackle out of Oklahoma, followed it up with Mason Smith, and then I drafted Jalen Coker. Tanner McLaughlin, Eric Watts, and Kamani Vidal. I grabbed two defensive linemen. We'll see what the Browns decide to do there. I, I really do think they're coming away with two offensive linemen. There were just no guards later in this draft without doing trades and things that I was high on to select. So I decided to go the tight end at 206 and uh, grab that running back at the end. Yeah, so I think between the two of us, we got one top 30 visit in i believe because i don't see do we? <laughs> yeah i'm just looking at all the top 30 visits um out of the um out, out of all the guys that are left i don't know who, if you saw or noticed but there are a couple guys that i would definitely pick as unrestricted free agents um the one guy out of pittsburgh named bub his ras score is unreal and uh, I think he'd be a great addition to the receiver room. Is that Bub uh, the other thing, The other thing is, is I don't know if you noticed, but the Browns did a workout for a kid that was uh, in one of the Florida schools, but not one of the big-time schools. Did you see that his name's Bayron Matos? Yes. Yep. So now when I see that guy, he's an offensive tackle. I believe he was 6'9 and 309 pounds. When I hear that, and I, I, and he played basketball, I'm thinking this guy can be a tight end. I'm throwing <laughs> a 50-50 ball up to this guy all the time. Yeah. You know, this guy can block. He knows blocking. Why don't you just go the other way? Now, if he can put more meat on his frame, because I didn't see how old he was. I didn't have enough uh, time to collect a lot of data on this guy. But, I mean, maybe that's someone he, go, he would go to. And then the other guy would be Aiden, Aiden Robbins, because I would just have a clone of... Uh, the guy that I drafted out of uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. So my biggest my biggest thing is is I wanted to get bigger, and I wanted to protect Deshaun Watson to get these guys open, and then on defense I just wanted thumpers. Yep. Well, you got them. So let us know. We're, we'll post these drafts, and you guys go ahead and comment. Tell us who had the the better draft or whose draft you like better, and then do your own. Do your own drafts. We I encourage you guys do mock drafting. Just for nothing else, I mean, I know it does. It isn't, you're not making the picks for the Browns, but at the same time, it does help you get more familiar with the names. It helps your draft viewing experience, especially like on Saturday. Because after doing all these exercises, I'm going to have a much more enjoyable time Saturday sitting on my couch, just kicking back, watching the, the draft on TV to see who the Browns pick and knowing that there are names on the board that I'm familiar with that I've come to like, come to not like, and see what happens. It's just, it's it's more, it makes it more fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. So we appreciate Just everybody. Like Christmas Day, man. Yes, I know. This is Christmas in April, baby. Let's do it. So <laughs> we appreciate everybody tuning into this episode. We'll have probably a couple other episodes come out during the week. There will not be a live studio episode this week until Friday. Friday night's the big night. I mean, we're going to be doing a three plus hour grind in there to bring you guys all the draft coverage for rounds two and three. Can't wait to do it. Kenny Max in studio along with. DF Derek Frisbee from Columbus and Devontae Travis should be. I haven't gotten the 100% confirmation, but he should be joining us as well. We're going to have a full studio, and it's going to be a ton of fun. So make sure you jump in the chat and just hang out with us during the draft. I can, man. Can't wait. It's going to be a good time. Absolutely. All right, guys. Until we talk to you on the next episode, let's go Browns. Go Brownies. <laughs>
This episode is sponsored by Aura. Browns fans, your online data and identity are way too precious to be left just hanging out there in the open for these data-stealing thugs to come after it, take it, and sell it to whoever they want. Scammers and spammers are just capitalizing on all of your data being sold, and I'm telling you right now, you don't even realize it because I didn't realize it. Head over to Aura, A-U-R-A dot com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S. Get a 14-day free trial. This is what I did. Create your account, and then you can run your data check, a free data check, and it will tell you how many data brokers are selling your information on the dark web and in different areas of the internet. And then Aura starts working immediately to remove your information from those places. I kept thinking I was good online. I was fine. I wasn't doing anything crazy with my information. I was being cautious while I was shopping online, all those things. And still, when I ran my check, I had 14 data brokers identified selling my information and or immediately started taking my name and all my information, my address, my email, my phone number, everything out of those places. I am so sick and tired of getting the spam emails, getting the spam text messages, the calls, and it's time to put all that crap to an end. So check out Aura, 14-day free trial, run your check, see what all the features they have to offer, like their VPN, their parental controls, everything that they have to protect your online identity. Aura.com slash dogs. Take back control of your identity today. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Craig is usually a fan of water cooler talk, but it's draft season, and that's all anyone wants to talk about. The Athletic has loads of articles about this year's draft. But Greg doesn't have the athletic, so now he's filling up his water bottle in the bathroom sink. Which, to remind you, is the sink people use after they use the bathroom. Get the athletic and get the info you need to speak draft fluently.